Do you still not yet? Do you not yet understand? Apparently not. Ow! My head! I wake up in my classroom with my head painfully throbbing. This doesn't feel like the first time this has happened. I look ahead of me. Akane and Amy. This feels also familiar in ways I can't explain. I look down at my desk and... There's a mysterious looking puzzle piece right next to a piece of cake. Has this slice of cake always been here? Wait, never mind. What about the puzzle piece? I reach out and touch it, and all of a sudden, I feel a surge of information flow into my head. This isn't the first one I found, is it? No, it's not. I reach into my pocket and pull out three other metallic puzzle pieces. I now have four. I vaguely recall collecting them somehow, and yet my memories are so hazy. When exactly did I get these? How long have I had them for? For some reason, it all feels familiar to me, but I'm having trouble remembering. I brush the thought aside and look at the cake. It would almost be a good time to confess to Akane, but with Amy watching... I don't think so. I get up and decide to talk to her. What are you doing there, Amy? Just reading up on this new museum exhibit opening up very soon. Personally, I find these things deeply interesting. Okay. Are you sure you wouldn't feel better doing that at home? Hmm... No, I think I'm fine where I am. Are you sure about that? You'd be surprised. I feel much more comfortable here than at home. Akane feels the same way at times. She does? The only place she feels really comfortable are when she's either at a part-time job or here. You didn't know that? Well, then again, I shouldn't be surprised. She doesn't really enjoy talking about her home life very much, so not many people really know. I... I had no idea. I probably said too much already, so I won't go into the specifics or talk about it further. Amy puts down her notebook and turns to look me in the eyes. Tell me, Daniel, do you believe in fate? Where is this coming from? Oh, nothing specific. I've always found the idea of fate rather fascinating, especially the idea of trying to defy it. Do you think it's possible to fight against fate itself? I don't know why you're asking me, but I guess anything is possible. After all, the future isn't something that's written in stone or anything. Hmm... That's what you said before. You're not making much sense here, Amy. What do you mean, before? Don't worry too much about me. I'm just rambling to myself at this point. What about you, though? Well... Come on. I just asked you about something so random. No ordinary person would could ever walk away without thinking something's wrong with me. If I can ask you about something like fate, then what's stopping you from asking me what's on your mind? I've just had this really weird case of deja vu hanging over me lately. Like, I've been in this place before, higher in the streets, and I'm off to go, you know. I've also felt like I'm being washed or followed a lot. By the Shadow Man. Hmm, interesting. Most interesting indeed. That is definitely something that would keep me on edge. Then again, that's not the only thing troubling your mind, though. Come on, Daniel. Don't hold back on me now. Wait, what? I know these things, Daniel. Now then, Penny for your thoughts. Well, I know it's going to sound stupid, but... Do I have the right to be loved? Of course you do, Daniel. Everyone does. 
Although whether or not it ends up being a happy thing or a sad thing has yet to be seen. Even so, everyone has the right to fall in love with someone. As everyone's... or wait... Because I've got to have somebody to love. Okay, well. Yeah, I know, I'm just making a random queen reference. <laughs> There's no telling how things will work out. Love can be a fickle thing. It can be pure and innocent, or it can become tainted and toxic depending on how things unfold. That's oddly profound. And the plot point of one of the mods I made. Yeah, like... Kind of like... Yeah. A lot of... Well, Tainted Love isn't technically part of the Perfect World Anthology anymore, but even then, it's like... Our mods kind of tie into each other. Like, there's a lot of overlaying theme... or There's a lot of overlaying themes and underlying ideas that fuel them that just kind of cross over. So even if love doesn't have a happy ending, it's still the part of your life nevertheless. People often associate love with negative emotions like hurt or anger, which is understandable. But then again, those aren't because of love itself. No, those are just a result that come from love and having loved someone. It isn't about whether or not you deserve to be loved, Daniel. It's about those feelings of love and what you do with them that decide whether your experience is a happy or an unhappy one. Now then, have you decided? Decided? You know what I'm talking about, Daniel. Crystal ball don't last, sugar. Okay, no. <laughs> Amy tilts her head in Akane's direction. Anyone with eyes can see that you've got it bad for her. They say true love waits, but that doesn't mean she's going to wait forever. You know we're graduating soon, so you're going to have to make some kind of move soon. It's now or never. I... I haven't decided yet. Hmm... So, after my little lesson in love and pep talk, you're still here questioning everything. Honestly. Even I have had enough of you, Daniel. Rude much? Let's face it, Daniel. We both know I'm not as sweet and patient like Akane over there. Even I have my limits when it comes to being hesitant or unsure. I can tell you right now, if it was me, I would have bucked up and taken the plunge already. Just don't worry about it so much. Now get away from me, Daniel. You're making me angry. Why don't you make yourself useful? And what are the plan over there? Why don't you do it? Because I'm nice and comfortable here while you're in panic mode and need to calm down. Before I can say anything, Amy shoves a cup in my face. Here! Yeah, too bad we... Yeah, that would be kind of hilarious. Like, we have a sprite of Amy just with her arm out with a cup, like, HERE! Just do something to take your mind off this, or else you're going to be a nervous wreck. Well, even more of a nervous wreck than you already are. As if that were even possible. Without hesitation, I take the cup from her and walk out of the classroom. I fill the cup over at the water fountain. Maybe she's right. I am a bundle of nerves right now, so maybe something menial might calm me down. Still, though, I could do without the condescending tone and sarcasm. Okay, there. Once the cup is full enough, I stop and return to the classroom. Yeah, I think I'm... I think it's been about, like, close to two hours since I've been... Or since I started, so... <laughs> I go over to the lonely plant by the windowsill and give it the fresh water. Amy wasn't joking. I have no idea when the last time it got any water. Or, I have no idea when was the last time it got any water. As I'm about to walk away, I notice some wet spot in the soil. 
They look like numbers? Wet spots and the shape of numbers remain in the soil. I rub my eyes to make sure I'm not seeing things. No. They're actually there. Although it looks like they're starting they're starting to slowly fade. I look at them closely. One, two, three, four, five. That's it? That sounds like the kind of password only an idiot would have for his email! Or, alternatively, that's the kind of combination only an idiot would have on his luggage! I shut my mouth as I realize I'm speaking kind of loud. Akane momentarily peeks her head up at me. I nervously hold the cup of the cup next to the plant. She gives me a smile before going back to her assignment. Well, I won't have any trouble remembering this number sequence, but what does it mean? Wait a minute. My backpack! Something is telling me to check my backpack for something. I rush over to my backpack and pull out a notebook identical to the one Amy has with her. Why do I have it, though? How did I even think to check my backpack? Well, never mind that now. The notebook has a square-shaped indentation and is locked with a combination. I place all four puzzle pieces in their proper slot and put in the combination. It opens. I turn over the front cover and find a key. What am I supposed to do with this? Is there anything in this room that needs a key? I walk over to the teacher's desk, which has various drawers and compartments to it. in it. I glance up before I do anything. Akane is not paying any attention. Er, Akane is not paying any attention to me, and neither is Amy. Okay, let's make this quick. A few drawers have locks that need a key to open them. I place the key in one of the lower drawers. No, that's not a. No, it's not a match. I try another one. Nope, not that one either. I then move over to one of the upper level drawers. I place the key in the lock and. It's a match! Wait, I shouldn't be doing this. Should I? Yeah, I don't think going through the teacher's desk is, or, uh, Going through the teacher's desk without permission is really a thing you should be doing, but... Here we are! Akane and Amy still aren't paying any attention to me. Yeah, I'm pretty sure I'm breaking school rules by doing this, but I've made it this far. I gently pull open the drawer. Yeah, sorry for anyone who wants there to be someone gently opening the door. This is the closest you're gonna get. There's a knife in here. Why is there a knife in a teacher's desk? As I put the key in my pocket, I, fe I feel myself reaching over to it, gently touching the blade. In doing so, a steering pain rushes from my fingertips all the way to my head. Gah! I had... What? That... That was Akane. I don't know what's going on right now, but something tells me that Akane is in danger. Whatever it is, I'm not going to let anything happen to her. I rush over to her desk, fighting the pain in my arm. Akane, I'm not sure how to explain it, but staying here is dangerous for you right now. You've got to get out of here! Daniel, what are you talking about? You need to get out of this room as fast as you can. I mean it. Your life might be in grave danger the longer you stay in here. Daniel, you don't look so good. I saw you fall asleep earlier in class. Did you have a nightmare? You're probably just extra freaked out from that. Or did something else happen to you? Come on, hurry up! Daniel, I understand you're kind of freaked out right now, but that's no reason to take it out on me like that. I get enough of that from my mom. Besides, I haven't finished up here. So stop yelling at me already! You're not my dad! I didn't even notice that Amy came over to us at some point. Yeah, Daniel, I told you you need to calm down. 
There's nothing bad going on right now. I think I speak for the both of us when I say you're kind of freaking us out a little bit. Amy, do you know the counselor is still here? I doubt it. Even if she was, I think Daniel needs something more to help him. <sighs> Alright. Maybe it was a nightmare. I haven't been feeling well lately. I think a lot of things have been really getting to me lately. Are you feeling stressed out? There anything going on taking a toll on you? Before I can say anything, Amy walks over to me and starts patting my head. Ah, <laughs> oh, poor boy. It's okay now, Daniel. You're safe here with us. You're a good boy. <laughs> oh my... Amy, you don't have to treat him like he's a dog. Nightmares and panic attacks aren't something to laugh at. Leave him alone. As you wish. Amy stops petting me and takes a few steps back. I'm... I'm sorry, Akane. That's alright, Daniel. I know how overdoing it on studying can really take a huge toll on you and all. Maybe you should go to the nurse's office. Is the nurse even still here? I'm not sure, but you never know. Let me help you there. What? Hey, kiddo. Let mom and dad talk here. Talk a bit here, would you? Okay, well... Hold on, let me do the line a little bit better. Hey, kiddo. Let mom and dad talk a bit here, would you? What are you... What the hell? What? Sorry, that was the first thing I could think of to make her quit it. Um, okay. Does she have to make it sound like we're Amy's parents, though? Are you sure, though? You, you don't have to do that, Akane. No, seriously, Daniel, I... I wouldn't feel right if I didn't do anything for you. Amy looks at us, mouth agape, as Akane leads me out of the door, carefully keeping an eye on me. This... this isn't real right now. I'm actually alone with her now. As I turn to face her, I stumble a little bit. Before I can fall, Amy rushes to my... S or, pff, nope. Yep, nope! We're not writing that kind of mod here. I don't know. You know, all things considered. Yeah, but Amy has not been in one of our in any of our mods for a long time. And I'd been planning to bring her back, but yeah, like I'm not even gonna tell you what our sixth mod almost was, but let's just say I was very unhappy with that project, and I'm kinda glad it was cancelled. But Amy was set to kind of make her grand reappearance there. Now that we shifted and bumped Forlorn Heart up to the sixth slot, well, I guess you could say Amy made her grand return in the sixth mod in the series anyway. Or is it the fifth? Oh, well. Yeah, ever since I decided, yeah, we're just going to pretend Tainted Love doesn't factor into any of this, it's been a little confusing. <laughs> But, yeah, no, we're not writing a mod where we're romancing Amy. But, what I was going to say is, when posting some of the teasers around the community, I did not realize a lot of people kind of did not like Amy's design. Now, to be fair, Amy is probably, like, one of the older... OCs that were made back in the day. And, well, I don't know, like, me personally, I think she looks fine, but a lot of people have been kind of saying, like, she looks weird or something. I, yeah, I don't really think that. Which kind of makes me wonder, like, yeah, if we were to make a mod where it's, like, specifically centered around this Amy, red hair, 
not Wendy's Amy, like, what would that be like? And I kind of wonder if people would see that, or, that, if people would want to see that. Anyway, before I can fall, Akane rushes to my side and puts one of my arms around her shoulder, propping me back up to my feet. You really need to take better care of yourself, you know. Oh. God, I just sounded like Momoko, didn't I? <laughs> no, it, no, at least you don't say that at the end of every other sentence like she does. <laughs> yeah, I guess you're right. For real, though, Daniel. Monica and Sayori have told me a little bit about your study habits. Damn it, Sayori! I mean, I like watching anime and gaming too, so I can't really blame you. Still, though, you know, I haven't really been able to do any of that stuff lately. I'm not sure if Monica's told you, but I have a part time job at a store not too far from here. Yeah, she told me something about that. She said that was why you couldn't join any of the clubs at school. Yeah. I would have really loved to join the literature club with you all, but I really need this job. Especially considering how my mother is most of the time. I have to do something. Your mother? I haven't told anyone this considering how embarrassing it is, but... My mother is very irresponsible. She always comes home drunk. She either comes home laughing with some random guy she met at a bar, or she comes back crying ugly style. Sometimes... Sometimes she comes home angry and takes it out on me. Wait, you don't mean... No, nothing like physically hurting me or anything. She just yells at me and tells me hurtful things. Like one time... She pauses for a moment. One time she told me if my dad hadn't knocked her up and I hadn't been born, she would have been a lot happier. That's... That's fucked up. Or well... <clears throat> that's... That's fucked up. Akane nods sadly, not even hiding the defeated look on her face. I feel a weight on my heart. I can't imagine anyone saying something like that about Akane. Especially not her own mother. What about your father, then? What's he like? My father's totally different. He loves and worries a lot about me. I'd rather be living with him right now, but after my parents had this nasty divorce and after he took on this job traveling... He said that as much as we both hated it, I had to stay here with her. He felt like he wouldn't be able to take care of me properly since he'd be gone for long periods of time. He told me he was afraid he'd neglect me and not like we have that much extended f and not like we have that much extended family he trusted. Honestly though, it couldn't have been much worse than living with that lady I call my mom. Akane's tone becomes sour. Acid dripping from those last words. I can feel the torment in her voice. After all this time... Akane... I didn't know. Well, now you do. Before I can say anything further, she interrupts me. Looks like we're here now. I look over and sure enough, I see the school infirmary, where the nurse can usually be found. The door's still open, so maybe she's still there. We make our way inside. It's not long after we get there that I'm escorted to one of the cots by the nurse. I do my best to rest, but a lot of things are still swirling around in my mind. What was that knife doing there? Why did I have that random flash of a nightmare come to me? Maybe I'm just seeing things. I don't even know. 
Maybe Akane has a point. I might be so stressed out that I'm having all these weird dreams and now... Now I'm seeing things that aren't even there. How bad must my mental state be if I'm seeing knives or shadow figures lurking around? Wait, shadow figures? Why am I thinking about that? My train of thought is derailed when I hear some voices not too far away. Akane, what are you doing here? What? Oh, nothing. Nothing at all. Why? You've got that job to go to, right? What's going on? Oh. Well, yeah, but... Okay, well, maybe it isn't nothing. Are you okay? Yeah, I'm fine. I just had to bring someone else here, that's all. There's a bit of silence before they resume talking. Oh my god, those eyes. <laughs> it wouldn't happen to involve that guy, you... Shh! He might hear you! Oh, I see. Sorry about that. Well, I guess I'd better get going then. See you around. Yeah, see you around. I find myself slipping away not long after. I guess sleep is finally here to take me. How long was I asleep for? I slowly get up from the pillow and look over to my side. Akane is fast asleep in one of the chairs. Wait, how long was she here for? Was I seriously alone with her like this? Well, hey, it could be worse. She could be washing, watching you while you sleep. Well, obviously, yeah, we're not playing that mod, but anyway. I'd rather not wake her up, but after seeing how dark it is outside, I think it's best to wake her up. I don't know how late she is to her job, and I'd rather she not get in trouble. I nervously reach over and gently poke her arm. I don't know any better... I don't know any better ways to do this. Hope she won't be too mad at me. Hey, Akane? Wake up. After gently prodding her arm enough, her eyes flutter open and she looks over at me. <laughs> yep. Huh? Oh, Daniel, it's you. How are you feeling? I'm feeling a lot better now, actually. How long were you there for? I'm not sure. I kind of just wanted to sit down and make sure you were okay, but after a while, I started feeling kind of sleepy. I have no idea how late you are to your job, so you should really get a move on. Oh, there's nothing to worry about there. I called my manager before I decided to sit down here. I told her there was a bit of an emergency I had to take care of. Wait, so you didn't go? Akane, I... Don't feel bad, Daniel. Or, don't feel bad, Daniel. I wanted to stay and make sure you were okay, remember? But missing your job because of me? Well, at first I told her that a friend of mine needed medical attention, but she seemed a little suspicious. So, well... She starts to nervously fidget in her chair as she struggles to find the right words. To get her off my back, I might have said you were my boyfriend and... And I didn't want to leave your side. Both of our faces are crimson now. A Akane? That was the first thing that popped into my head. I'm sorry, I didn't mean to lie to her about you, but I didn't even feel like going in after that scare you gave me. I was worried, and I just wanted to make sure you were okay, and I didn't know what else to do, so I just... She hides her face in her arms. I'm sorry, I didn't mean to make things awkward between us. I always make everything awkward for everything I... for everyone I talk to, I swear. If you're angry with me, I totally understand. 
don't feel like you have to talk to me anymore or even acknowledge I exist. Honestly, I don't know why I said that to her. But I guess... It's just because... Er, honestly, I don't know why I said... No, I... Honestly, I don't know why I said that to her. I guess it's just because... Because... I slowly get off the bed and go over to her. I gently take off her glasses and sure enough, there were tears in her eyes. Akane? Yes? I've... I've liked you for a long time now. I just never knew the best way to ask you out. So... Well... What do you say? Daniel, do, do you really mean that? Really, really. Yes, Daniel, yes! I wanted to ask you myself, but I was so scared you wouldn't like me. This is so great. As she dries her tears, I put her glasses back on her. As I reach out for her hand, we are interrupted by an unexpected guest. We interrupt your daily or we interrupt this broadcast for a special bulletin. Sorry, you two, but there's no time for love here. Amy? I don't know if it's the will of the real Akane or not, but this isn't what's supposed to happen. Fate is called as such because we can't change or deny it. We can only accept it. The real Akane? What are you talking about? Sorry, lover boy, but it's time for you to go back to sleep. Either that, or we can avoid all of this is if Amy just rejects you again and leaves. Again? What are you saying? I'm not leaving his side. Amy reaches over for something. A bat. Amy, what are you going to do with that? Say goodnight, Daniel. Or, say goodnight, Daniel. Before I can say anything, I feel the full force of Amy swinging the bat into my face. Jeez. Yep, it's been forever since I've seen that. What are you doing? Get away from him! Hush, sweetie. You know, for someone who's shy, you're kind of loud, aren't you? You're not hurting him! Not while I'm still standing! Very poor choice of words. Fine, then. Fine, then it's lights out for you, too. I struggle to get back up. I see Akane trying to wrestle the bat away from Amy. Just as she's about to, Amy lets go of the bat, sending her tumbling backward. When Akane falls to the ground, she releases the bat, allowing Amy to reclaim it. Don't worry. This will only hurt for a second. With the bat, Amy whacks Akane upside the head with seeming less force, knocking her out cold. Akane! Okay, well, I guess... For some bit of useless trivia, when we had our former lead coder, this was actually meant to be a lot different. Especially since... He wanted the Perfect World Anthology to lean more towards the dark edginess of Tainted Love, and not so much the sort of horror yet innocent romance story like Night Nurse. So, in this part, Amy actually would have had the knife that was in the teacher's desk. And Akane was originally meant to die here. Instead, Amy just knocks her out cold, because, yeah, we're not doing that anymore. <laughs> like, no thanks. I'm not letting him hijack our stories anymore. So, yeah. This, this originally went a lot differently. 
There's a few parts that actually went by a lot differently, but I'll point those out to you. Now, where were we, lover boy? Oh, right. Operation Go to Sleep. Amy resumes swinging her bat at me with full force over and over again. Go to sleep, go to sleep, go to sleep! I can't even feel my face anymore. Soon I feel my consciousness fading. We were this close to greatness. This close. Fate is called as such, as it cannot be changed or reversed. Yeah, unfortunately. I am not sure how to do the timing on that, so... But that is what it says. I read it out, at least how I initially scripted it. Anyway. Ow, my head. I wake up in my classroom with my head painfully throbbing. This doesn't feel like the first time this has happened. I look ahead of me. Akane. All by ourselves. There is no one else here. Now is the perfect opportunity to confess to her. At least, it would be if I weren't hesitating so much. A part of this feels familiar to me somehow, but I'm not sure why. I look to my desk and see... What the fuck is that? There's a bloody knife on my desk! I gently reach over and brush my finger along the handle. Okay, I'm guessing... Well... I guess that little piece was left over from the old version of that previous loop where, yeah, Kane actually died. Oh well. But, well, I guess now, I suppose you can just leave it to your imagination, like, yeah, where, where did the knife come from? Why is it bloody? Who knows? Okay, yeah, I had to get a drink after that. Yeah, because, gosh, I've been going for at least two and a half hours at this point. Anyway, well, yeah, so, especially if you consider that Akane is, like, my mascot girl, my, like, the first OC that we ever created within Team Trader, and Especially since she is meant to be, like, one of the tributes I made to Darlene. I was kind of here, like... The fact that M... Well, no, the fact that... Yeah, the fact that Amy kind of just, you know, does away with her was... A bit of a point of contention where I, I was even kind of here, like... Yeah, this doesn't really feel right. And, but, yeah... Ever since the departure of our old coder, I've been kind of trying to see about getting things back on track, and... Like... Okay, obviously, Forlorn Heart does kind of have some horror elements to it, as you've seen, but... I don't want it to be, like... Like, so much horror, and so much, like... Hopelessness, and, like... I don't know, I just don't want it to be so edgy. Like, okay, yeah, maybe there's a little bit of that here and there, but I don't want it to be, like, the whole mod. Like, I want there to be little moments of humor in there, and... Like... I liked getting to write that little moment of him and Akane in the nurse's office, you know, before Amy shows up. Like, I had fun kind of writing that. And... I thought it was kind of cute kind of seeing them, like, confess to each other. So, those are, like, the kind of stories that I want to write. Nothing that's just, like, pure horror and edginess just for the sake of it. Like, that was kind of what he wanted. And that was eventually what led to him and I just deciding, like, yeah, this isn't going to work out. And after Akane's birthday came out, he departed. And I haven't spoken to him since. 
And that was around the time when Ninja eventually kind of stepped into that role as our new lead coder, and, well, that, as they say, is that. The rest is history. I was able to make Carpe Diem Somnium in the meantime, as, like, a bit of a holdover, but, yeah, unfortunately, it just left us in... It left us in a bit of a bind. Especially considering the fact that the other guy, he did have quite a bit of work done on Forlorn Heart, but when he left, we didn't get any of that. He left us with the backgrounds for like the Blood Moon and everything. I did the Shadow Man, I drew him. Yeah, other than that, it's... Oh, well, and then the Nightmare Akane face. I also drew that, but... Other than that, it's like, yeah, all the progress that w we had made while he was still on the team, all of that was lost. It's not like he really left it for us or anything, so... That was kind of where we were with a lot of our mods. Shatter Time Rewind being the other one that was kind of left in limbo because, well... Yeah, we had all this work put into it, and now, now it's like it's all gone. Which was very... I don't even know what to say. It was just... Demotivating? Like, yeah, you put in all this work into something, and then all of a sudden it's gone. Almost like you're writing a college paper, but then... The power goes out, your computer goes out, and you didn't save it. It's almost something like that. Except in this case, it's like... You had someone you thought you could trust... Helping you with the project... Holding on to those files and, you know, helping put it together... Just for them to kind of yank it away from you and... Like, they don't even let you hold on to it. So, yeah. But I can say that after we've kind of been able to let the dust settle and get back on our feet, things are kind of getting back in motion for us. Like, for example, said former coder basically said that, well, number one, he called this mod Silver Tempest, which was... The working title of another mod we had planned. He said that this mod was most likely cancelled since he had left, and he even kind of spoiled the plot all in a Reddit post when someone asked about like some of the backgrounds he had made, specifically th that were going to be used in this mod. So, yeah, I guess you could say that it took a little over a year to get it back to where it was, but this mod is finally going to come out after he said that it was cancelled. Anyhow, I gently reached over and brushed my finger along the handle. In doing so, a sharp pain shoots up my arm, followed by a flood of memories rushing in my head. I think I remember something. The notebook, the puzzle pieces, the key, the knife. Whatever is going on here, I know it isn't anything good. I rush over to Akane for what feels like the 20th time. This time, however, I'm not trying to confess my love to her. Akane, I'm not sure how to explain it, but staying here is dangerous for you right now. You've got to get out of here. Daniel? What do you mean? You need to get out of this room as fast as you can. I mean it. Your life might be in grave danger the longer you stay in here. Daniel, you don't look so good. I saw you fall asleep again earlier. Did you have a nightmare? Did something happen to you? Come on, hurry up! Daniel, I understand you're kind of freaked out right now, 
But that's no reason to take it out on me like that. I got enough of that from my mom. Besides, I haven't finished up here. In desperation, I run over to the desk and pick up the knife, ignoring the burning sensation in my palm as I present it to her. This isn't a nightmare, Akane. Look at this knife I found. Something is going on here, and I think we're in danger the longer we stay here. I'm shocked when Akane dismissively looks at the knife before looking at her assignment again. I missed the part where that's my problem. Now, would you stop annoying me already? I have to finish up here, so please, leave me alone already. My grip tightens around the knife. You fail to see how it's your problem? It'll be your problem if whoever used this thing comes back and makes into mincemeat. Can't you see the danger we might be in here? You're seriously getting on my nerves right now, Daniel. Leave. Me. Alone. Not for your safety, I will. You're being a goddamn nuisance, Daniel. Get away from me already. Okana gets up from her desk, shoving me away from her. I lose my balance and I hit my head against one of the desks. I was lucky the knife wasn't pointed at me in any way, otherwise I could have ended badly. The pain in my hand stops, but this time, I feel my head being overloaded with more information. I... I remember everything now. This isn't the first time I've woken up in this class, in the classroom. I don't even know how many times I've done this, but each time I've tried to confess my love to Akane. Uh, let me see, I think I actually wrote it down here. I believe this might either be the 15th or 16th loop here. I think it might be the 15th. For anyone to keep... keep but, for anyone keeping track at home, I mean, yeah, please, feel free to tell me. Each time I did, she would reject me in one way or another. Well, not, except for the one time where you literally just looked at her and decided, I'm not going to do this. Or the other time when you came in late after speaking with Monica and Kodanoa, you kind of just... You froze, she said goodbye to you, and then you said goodbye to her. Like, there was no rejection. But, well, yeah, for the most part, he was sort of getting rejected in some way or another. The previous time, though, that felt like a dream come true. So why? Oh my god. That actually scared me. It is time. I look over and see the shadowy figure that has been stalking me this whole time in the room. His eyes glow a deep red, glaring daggers at me. The room suddenly darkens. I look out the window and see a familiar blood moon filling the sky, bathing everything in a crimson hue. I set my gaze back to this omen. He continues to glare at me, sending a chill down my spine. I get up and look away from him. Akane has already sat back at her seat to resume her work. Now, you know the truth. You know what must be done. Do it. That voice. I feel like a switch has flipped inside my mind. My body starts to move on its own now. Looking at Akane used to fill me with hope. Now, all I feel is pure rage. My hand grips the knife tightly. Do it. After all I've been through. After the way she's treated me. I'm still in love with Akane. I must be such a goddamn idiot for putting up with her after all this time. 
All I wanted was to protect her and see her happy. How does she reward me? Telling me I'm a nuisance and shoving me to the ground. I put a hand on her shoulder, causing her to look over at me. Now what do you- Without hesitation, I shove her to the ground. Payback is a bitch, isn't it? What are you doing? Do it. I clench the knife tightly as I make a jab at her. Luckily for her, she notices just in time and moves to the side. Have you lost your mind? No. The only thing I've lost is my patience. What the hell are you on about? I kick her desk away as I trudge toward her. She throws her bag at me in a feeble attempt to stop me. Sure, I had to swat it away, but that didn't buy her much time. She got up to her feet and attempted to make a break for the door. I grab her by the wrist with my other hand, holding onto her tightly as I drag her to the wall. Let go of me! No. I slam her against the wall. I can see the terror in her eyes. For some reason, this sight fills me with unexplained pleasure. You're... You're crushing my wrist! Stop! I close my hand tighter around her wrist, just to see her writhe in agony. Do you know what you're doing? An innocent lamb, waiting for the slaughter. Yes. You're not thinking clearly! <clears throat> you're not thinking clearly! Whatever it is... I... I love you, Akane. I love you so much. I'm... I'm in agony. You're in my very soul. Tormenting me. Every single time I confess to you. Every single rejection. It was like a knife in my heart. Do you know what that feels like? What? But you never confessed to me. Liar! It's time. Do it. Don't act so innocent, Akane. We've been through this more times than I can keep track of, and I'm sick of it. I don't know you anymore, Daniel. You're hurting me. Don't do this. You've hurt me more, Akane. All I ever wanted was a chance to prove myself to you. And yet you shot me down at every turn. Why is that? For some reason, something changes in Akane as she looks at me. What is this? Why do you hate me so much? Come on. It was a different thing every time I confessed to you, but what's the real reason? Stop! You're a good person, Daniel. Don't do this. Stop listening to him. Ignore her. She's only going to confuse you. No, don't listen to him, Daniel. This isn't you! The Daniel I know would never do this! Enough! No! Snap out of it already! I... I love you! Liar! Do it! Make the sacrifice! With the knife in hand, I dangle it in between my fingers before aiming it at Akane's neck. If I can't have you, no one can. As I'm about to plunge the knife into her neck, I stop myself. I look into Akane's eyes, stricken with fear and hurt. I... I drop the knife and let her go. 
Akane falls to the floor, shaking violently. What? Oh, interesting. You managed to break my hold. You! Why didn't you give in? Are you that useless? The last one sure didn't hold back when he... Jugral! That's enough. I look back to see the masked figure vanish into the shadows. From the floor, what I can only describe as a plume of black fire erupts, casting a pair of green eyes at me. Forgive my subordinate. He honestly couldn't snap his own fingers without any help. He still... still... He raises an interesting point. Congratulate, er, congratulate yourself, Daniel, for being the second person to break free from my mental manipulation. Trunkos, tell me, young one, how are you feeling now? The crimson glow from the moon fades as it returns to its natural color in the sky. I look back at the black fly I look back at the black fire plume. In the heat of the moment, I felt something come over me. I wasn't myself back there. I stumbled a little before grabbing onto a desk. That whole time. How was you? I must say, you have exceeded my expectations. I must say. You have exceeded my expectations, even still. You clearly have a high amount of outstanding moral fiber. What was all that? What did you do to me? I just took some of those negative emotions I spoke to you about earlier and provided you with a gentle push in the right direction. You have anger. You have scorn, all directed at the young woman. You refuse to use them, so I decided to steer you in the right direction. You are the first I've seen to resist me so early on. The last pathetic fool I tried this with murdered some ignorant brute that killed the woman he loved. He didn't resist me at all. At least, not until he ran into the arms of his newfound love, trying to sway him back into the light. At the time of recording this, the mod isn't quite out yet, but... If you're watching this in the future, well... Then, so long as you're following along, I think you know which mod he's talking about. You sick, twisted bastard! So this is what you do in your free time? You've failed to realize the truth. This could have all ended had you only accepted your fate. Instead, I've had to take drastic measures to convince you. Instead, Look at what your hands have wrought. Misery, misery, misery. So, another sort of difference is... While under Taranko's control, MC actually would have killed Akane. But of course... Going back to what I said earlier, not only did I just not want to see Akane die, but the whole thing that, like, <laughs> as silly as it sounds, well, you'll see eventually, but his love for Akane is basically, like, <laughs> what am I trying to say here? <laughs> His love for Akane is very strong, and so 
in this case, he was able to kind of, like, power through and break free somehow. But, yeah, in the original draft, MC actually did succeed in killing Akane. And then once he realizes what he's done, he's... he's horrified. And he has Taranko's kind of there just sort of making fun of him, like... Yeah, you... <laughs> you talk a big game about love and friendship and look at what you did. Out of pure rage and hatred, you went and you killed the woman you love. And... That kind of horrifies... Well, that horrifies him, but it also kind of, like, really scars him and freaks him out, and... Yeah, again. Once I was able to take full control back of the story and all, I decided, yeah, that is not going to happen anymore. And... I don't want this story to be so dark and hopeless. I want there to be some bit of hope in this darkness, so to say. So instead, he catches himself before he actually does the deed, realizes what the hell am I doing, he drops the knife and, like, yeah, he basically just, like, he fully snaps out of it, like, I was almost about to kill her, like, what's wrong with me? And then, yeah, I was like, oh, well, you see, I've been kind of, like, manipulating you into doing that, so, you know, sorry about that. Except I'm not sorry. I look back at Akane, who slowly makes her way back to me. I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. I... Akane puts a hand to my cheek, stopping me from apologizing. I know you, Daniel. You'd never want to hurt me. It's all him trying to use you like a puppet. Such sharp words. Yes. Even so, you were this close to claiming her life out of, out of anger and vengeance. Your speech about love and friendship. How does that make you feel? So, you know, in the original, he basically would have been like, yeah, all, everything you said about love and friendship, well, look at what you did. You claimed her life out of anger and jealousy, or not anger and jealousy, ah, not tainted love, anger and vengeance. Like, basically to show... Yeah, you talk a big game, but... Yeah, when... You're fueled by nothing but anger and pure rage... You basically throw all those morals out the window. But in this case... He didn't. He was able to snap out of it before he did something he was going to regret. Hence why Tarankos is kind of here like, oh wow, so congratulations, you actually showed that, yeah, you have, like, high morals to the point where you were able to break free from my control. So, anyway, how does that make you feel? No. No! I love Akane. I would never do this. Your actions suggest otherwise. At least, from a certain point of view. Only because you're the one screwing with his mind. You. Where are you? Stop hiding behind some smoke and mirrors and show yourself. Loving someone so much to the point you could murder them in cold blood. How interesting. This... this can't be real. You are correct.
correct. This is all an illusion. I am but your humble guide in helping you accept your fate. Then what is my fate? You will see soon enough. Your rebellion ends here. A gust of wind erupts from the center of the room, knocking me off my feet into the floor. Daniel! Akane! I try to reach out for her in desperation, only to watch her fade away. As the wind continues, I'm having trouble breathing. I eventually lose consciousness and I can't properly breathe anymore.